territory. Comes back lead low to Hogg. Just tries to clear his lines. Takes it long and deep. So now there are these heavy, heavy men. This is Bunga Lilo, 106 kgs of fullback. Beat the underneath it. Laid low. Ball bounces everywhere. Oh, well done, Russell. Russell steps through a body or two. Plays it off the ground, taken though by Takulua. The Northland player, two Northland halfbacks. And they're trying to get the ball here at the Scots, but uh, the Tongans get it to ground. Takulua. Takulua hits up Mafu. Mafu stays beyond a couple of tacklers. Got some space here. Lilo. Lilo head down. Tonga producing lots of possession here. This is Latu. Takalua has three, four, five big men. Hits the fullback. Offside. And enough danger in what Tonga do to make Scotland worry. Finn Russell under a lot of pressure here, but good footwork to get out. Good step here. And he tries to offload this for the second attempt, which just goes to the Tongan defender, unfortunately. But that's what Scotland play. It's the right decision, just bad execution. And then when Tonga get through the phases, Stuart Hogg got penalised for not rolling away. And that's the game plan. That has been what Scotland have done, I think, very well in the first two games. Both playing out of defence. We saw the, from the line-out there, they ran it in the 22 to get their exit strategy in the, in the central position. But then they also play in the offloading game, which has been good. But you always know with offload, it can go 50-50 at times. And that all contributed to Tonga getting the ball, came left field. A couple of big men smashing up, and that means that uh, Toshita of Northland has a chance to just get the Tongans onto the scoreboard. And what you need in a game like this is just to get the scoreboard ticking over. But both teams play similar rugby. It's a very, very... Not a dry pitch, very hard pitch. I think we're in for a fish. It looks, doesn't it, Andy, as if they've got um, can't launch the Scots to attack from their own 22 just to run if they want it. This is a kick of about, well, just outside the 22, so on the angle. Natural position for the right for the kicker. Gets the first point of the game as Tonga go into the lead here at Rugby Park in Kilmarnock. They lead 3 0. Quite clinical play there by Tonga. First time in the 22, they get a chance to take the three points. Scotland got in the Tonga 22, but weren't able to through the line out. So, good start by Tonga. They look quite impressive. And there's a, a few fans in the stadium here in Kilmarnock. They'll have enjoyed the start to this game. I'm just thinking, Scotland tried a couple of tricks at line out time didn't they? Rather than just standard line -ups. They tried a couple of things, didn't quite come off. Martin, no one was quite sure why his uh, time at Warriors was so short. Laidlaw, Laidlaw, has Harley with him to cross. Cross, head down, steamrollers up the pitch. Laidlaw has Cowan. Cowan comes infield underneath the height of the Tongan tacklers. Laidlaw looks left. To Johnny Gray, pile of bodies. Tongue and arms and feet everywhere. Beatty, Beatty skips inside one or two. Laidlaw, Russell in behind to Vissa. Richie Gray. And it's going to be a penalty. It'll be called back, I think, but um, no matter how Ronnie Caller wants to run. Somebody should just tell me it's actually finished that field. Good turnover, great position for turnover. Obviously, in the Tonga 22, you can see it here. Quite hard to see. Good, good, good secondary rucking there. Greg Lowder turns it, turns it round. Rob Harley gets it, but then this is at the end. Goes try to go wide there from Vista to Richie Gray's under so much pressure, but the penalty had already been given. 
I think Scotland really will look to get some points. Minimum well. three, but they've gone for the five here. They've gone for the line-out again. This is the third time they've had a line-out deep in the Tonga 22. Ford. Lobbed over to Harley. Harley takes it deep. Ball at the back of the mall. Staying on the feet that side. A mile off side, taken quickly as it going to be by, uh, well, taken originally for side entry, side but obviously entry. I didn't see if the Tongans didn't put anybody side. into the mall. No, in did. which case, you can do that, as we know, Latu can no, come round, but if they had anybody definitely. in the mall, he was a mile off side. Scotland, you have to be aware of if Scotland you play golf, the Deep in 22, they'll pra practice these, what, what will you do if you get line up close to the Tongan line? Johnny Gray is calling the line outs. The youngest man in the pack, he's calling the lineouts. Yeah, mentored by Al Kellogg too, the last couple of years, and how to call lineouts. Callum. Oh boy, what? It's a mile offside. Yeah. That was a little bit obvious because. No, you took the gamble, off you go. Well, that's, that's, that's two within 30 seconds that are the most obvious offside. The mall was formed. There was Tongan players engaged. You're right to say if there wasn't a Tongan player, he's right to do that. But there was. We can see it here, set up very well. Johnny Gray line out. It's it sad. gets back to Blair Cowan. They just take their take their time. But look at Latu. There's a three three Tongan players engaged in the mall. And he comes right in front of JP Doyle. And no wonder that's a yellow card. Two in 30 seconds. That's a big mistake because he's a very good player. Just as, he, as JP Doyle said, took the gamble. Richie Gray, back to Harley. One side, pulling it down. Yeah, another collapse. So that was uh, Milau, Tavita Milau, who was a judge just coming from the side. Laidlaw's in the back of that mall, I think, as well. He can't, he's, he's going for his pocket for a second, Cindy. Captain, I need a captain. Your seven's in the bin. Number one, not you. Number one. Who's captain? Yeah, yeah. Here's the room. Are they, listen, they're breaking off. Listen, at the mall time, yeah. you've got number one clearly coming in the side and tackling it after the mall has gone. Okay. okay. I'm not viewing it as breaking off. Okay. Too many penalties, they'll keep going to the bed, okay. okay? What about when it's going down? You need to talk to them about your offences. Very clear that from JP Doyle, number one's going Scotland, inside, they can see it just, it is on the ground. Milo just went in the side there. He comes in from the back that time, but the, the offence had already occurred. So, as he said, it's piling up. The number that's four penalties for the same offence. Well, you have to feel the Scots will have done their homework. This is what they think they can succeed with. So, 14 minutes gone, still three points down, and another liner looking for the five points. Say two meters seven, Scotland. So Tonga can collapse this quickly if they want. One smackers come up. So this looks a bit more promising with the kind of speed on it. Cowan's at the back there. He's maybe a yard away. And the train is being given. So all that pressure, all those line-out practices have paid off as Blair Cowan, I think, was the man who had it to start with. So they've got downward pressure. Yeah, it was good pace and play there from Scotland. They just knew what they were trying to do and they eventually executed it pretty well. Their town's getting the plaudits, but that is a that's a team try, that's a forward pack try. He's at the back there, you can see there I just thought it was flying over, it slowed down, but they kept the composure and he got across the line. Yeah, it's good coordination. Maybe a couple of high bodies, the Tongans there just fighting to get in the way, but he I think the body went underneath him, but Cowan just got the ball down right in front of J.P. Doyle. There he is. Blair Cowan, he's really impressed, hasn't he? These three tests, he's got a, a bit of bang about him. He's got some skills on the ball. He's a good tackler. Very brave in the seven jersey. And Laidlaw's kick sails between the posts. Scotland had maybe another, what, seven or eight minutes of... Uh, a man advantage too. But they would have done well there if they've responded to going down to the penalty. And they did that very well against Argentina in the first game. It's all about reacting well to how you can take points. And Scotland yet again have come back and got a try.
Pasita goes long. That was very much a, a contrast in disciplines, wasn't it? Tonga were ill-disciplined with their line-out defence, with their mall defence. Scotland were very disciplined in their execution of, of the mall and eventually they got over to get that well-earned try. Now we know that Tonga, with ball in hand, can be as good as many of the nations around. Big, big men. There's the two seconder I talked about, Loka Tui. And Tui now, Joe Tui now, Lyon. Former American footballer. Good steal. I think that's Dickinson driving over. Laidlaw. Gray. Harley. Round the corner. Lots of bodies. Finn Russell. Open play. Russell presents. Did he release? He didn't release. Open play for six to enter. Open play. So it was good build up play by Scotland, but very good defensive play by Callum Afone, the number six for Tonga, who went in through the gate and managed to get to snaffle Finn Russell and would get the turnover. But up to that point, good interplay again between forwards and backs. John, we're seeing that. The offloading, they're not just going for one hit up, they're looking to play the game. Here's the lesson, here's the play, and this is Russell. So it's in behind, Harley in behind Russell. Thinks about passing, nothing on, goes himself. Good tackle, and as you said, in through the gate. Hands on ball, stayed on his feet, not enough Scottish bodies to clear the ruck away. Textbook play there from Calabafoni. Scotland will need to start targeting him before he gets his hands on the ball because he's that big. You can do that and you can play him out the game. Lutui with the throw, goes long. Slightly loose, pass back, snaffled by the late log. There'll be no scrum half, Seymour calls that he's in there. The look out. Longer pass to Ford. Ford, Ford does well. Ford staying up. Pumps those legs. He's going to get to deck there off. He's going to be in there. He does get to deck. Laidlaw's thinking is told to go right. Chips instead. These big Tongans go back. This is Lilo. He calls a mark. Stay there. Stay there. Scotland. You're not just going to unlock the Tongans, are you, in any easy way? No, you're not. They're going to have to create chances, get pace on the ball, speed on the ball. A man down there, I'd have uh, like Greg Laidlaw maybe to have thrown that route wide. Let's try it, stretch the defence, see what they're like, down, defending down to 14 men. But then again, they've still got a line out here in a good position. Yeah, the kick's made about 15 metres actually, because um, the kick out from Lilo takes Scotland just to inside the tongue enough. If you just joined us, this is a rugby park. It's a fully artificial pitch. It's a lot harder than Alexis Saracen's Johnny Gray fakes, two fakes, deep one, Paul, the start to beat his hands. And a brilliant play by Visser, who looked to have been smashed in contact. Playing much wider today, Scotland, Robert Harley is uh, caught and that's going to be an offside. They're just, they're trying to play, the execution's just not quite there, they're fizzing out long passes, and they're not just quite going to hand. You can see it here, this is Greg Laidlaw, comes out to Finn Russell, he Knock fizzes it to Harley. Harley should take that, but it was just slightly high. Well, he was lined up by four men in red jerseys. Not playing the same way they played against the All Blacks, nor the Argentine, which was much more one-pass rugby, get over the game line. This is wider stuff today. They're trying it, and it's the right thing. Uh, Rob Harley, has, I think, has been outstanding in the first two games. I think, I think probably Greg Laidlaw, over the two games, would be Scotland's play of the season, series so far. But he'll be pushed very, very hard by Rob Harley. He's been outstanding. His work rate is phenomenal. He'll be disappointed with that mistake, but up to now he's been fantastic. time that's Cosita but um, it's worth waiting for because another three points to Tonga and Scotland everything that's gone wrong has been of their own doing Andy hasn't it a couple of line out mistakes wider play wider passes pushing things yeah they're just making mistakes they've made three handling errors so far you yeah, know that's the, the, the key you're just giving possession away here's the chase is long Matthews underneath it 
Bonnie. That's good running this time by Halai for Nua. Lutui thinks about going the short side. Tongan standoff. One or two pass game. Onto the halfway line. They've got a back attack lined up here. Through the big man. This is Butao. Part of the tackle. Part of the tackle. I think he's saying he didn't release. He was part of the tackle. So you've got to tackle somebody if you want to go in for a second bite. You've got to release then go in. You'll sometimes see players, won't you? They'll take their hands away to show that what they're trying to do is go in for the second bite. But he's saying that Dunbar, he's saying, was the tackler. So this thing comes out wide. Scotland's defence is looking good. Tommy Seymour, is it? He's not the tackler. Alex Dunbar is not the tackler. Jukie Doyle's got the rock. I think he went off his feet. I think he could have given the penalty possibly for going off his feet. But he wasn't the tackler. Tommy Seymour was. Sense the crowd's a bit worried here, and difficult. Just the tongue is showing enough, even when they're a man down, to cause problems. So for Sita. We'll probably look bad. Let's have a look at this. Goes down bottom first. The trouble is, he did take him above the horizontal. Okay, Alex Bar takes, takes him up. Johnny Gray, Richard Gray, there is in helping. The key is, if you take a player off the ground, you've got to make sure they get down safely and you don't drive them down. He gets them above the horizontal, he then lets go. Yeah, now, just whether you're supposed to bring him down or you just drop no, him. There's no charm of, harm of injury here. But I think technically, Alex Dunbar there is going to take down. I think they're going to say that'll be a yellow card against Alex Dunbar. No, but can you tell me if you are showing a replay because there's nothing on the screen? Well, Mr. Doyle saying he's not getting the replays on the screen, and he's talking to Mr. Damasco saying, "Tell me what to think." apologize there's a little problem here in the stadium it's not being shown on the screen therefore i think mr damasco is just trying to tell referee mr doyle what's happening so without richard gray now if, if richard gray wasn't there i think that's a clear yellow card because it went above the horizontal and alex dunbar did not Carter, replace the, 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 the attacking player okay can i ask you for here we go let's be quiet and listen to this Well, like you, we can't hear okay. the TMO. Against 12, 12 Scotland. So okay. it's going to be what asked for a higher sanction. He's walking across. This is either going to be a penalty or a yellow card. It's a tip tackle, okay, on his back, so a yellow card. Yellow card. Because you were yeah. right, Andy Nicholas, so Alec Dunbar. After all that, is Simba. So now we've got Tonga with a man advantage. Let's see what they try to do. That's the thing, you just cannot lift players off the ground these days unless you take them back down safely to terra firma. Dunbar didn't do that, so he gets 10 minutes for it. These are dangerous times for this Scottish rugby team. They're looking for revenge, but uh, at the moment, if we're honest, they're not firing in all cylinders playing wide taken by Lokatui Bezier player south of France they look up he's got Fosita Takalua has got Fosita outside him little pod of forwards Latu nearly Latu round the corner they go but they also flood left to the big man could be Kalamafoni on the crash he's ignored instead they give it to Vinicolo Ovexeta 
proud rugby league family too. Latu is collared by Dickinson. Little chip ahead through the gap and a bit of territory for Tonga who are just playing safe with a man extra and Scotland now have to defend Play again. Play again. Yeah they have and Play we're seeing again. them now Play being again. tested like they've not really in the in the autumn series so far and it's, a, it's, it's good for the development to have this test to see how they'll cope with this 10 minutes what I've been really impressed so far in the first two games is how they've exited the 22 last week against New Zealand they played phase Just after phase they showed great ambition and actually good contact skills Harley's used a lot in these oh. lineups Cowan has it over Tongans drive them back though as, uh, so one more stoppage Shemar, before it, he's been told to use so Laidlaw's being told to use it Shemar. back to Russell Scotland just struggling to keep that ball in the middle, held on. And uh, Russell took it up. I think he was expecting bodies to be outside him. Hey, hey, go. No, no, go. You don't talk on that panel. Well, let's have a look at this because, again, they're trying to go out, but a bit exposed. Finn Russell keeps all the ball, but Latu there's just not cleared out. You can see Greg Laidlaw has to fight for it. He gets it, and then it's on the ground, and JP Doyle has said that that is a penalty against Scotland for holding it in which I'm not sure I would agree with well no matter it's a two point deficit for Scotland and this man so far Fosita of Northland Latiumi Fosita has been kicking well here he goes 27 minutes gone Tonga coming more into the game now with 15 men on the pitch crowd is a bit edgy and nervous this probably wasn't in the script. Scotland have been doing well so far, but this man's right boot is doing even better. You can hear just that little sense of anticipation. It's 12-7, Andy. Well, what we've seen, obviously, is Fasita is a very good goal kicker. Four, four chances, four kicks. 12-7 in the lead. So Scotland know they can't give away penalties, but what they're doing is their discipline, which has been really good in the first two games, and their, their skill level and execution of the first two games has just dropped off a bit yeah, here today. But they're also playing much more well uh, taken by Fisher. Fisher band goes through one now to Johnny Gray. Johnny Gray over the 22. There's a back division streaming for this. Gives it to Richie Gray. Richie Gray heads into another bunch of big red jerseys. Ford. Ford thinks once, thinks twice. Presents ball. Laidlaw, short again. Dickinson. Half of Tonga was waiting for him. Looks outside this time for Johnny Gray. Johnny Gray in a big red meat sandwich. Bodies to the left. Cowan. Cowan tries to spin. Jeff Cross in to help support. Beatty. Beatty in between two men. Spins out the first tackle. Laidlaw. Russell. Lamont. Good defence. Cowan going backwards. Nailed. Scotland regroup, regroup, re-ruck. Laidlaw. Gray. Cross. And so far the Scots have gone backwards. Laidlaw thinks about going left. There are a man down little chip for Visser. If this sits up, it could be good for him. He does. He spins out the top of the left. A good bit of defence there. Caught under pressure was the Tongan defence. But Visser, well, he had a chance. Yeah, it was good defence all round by Tonga there because Scotland threw everything at them but they defended really aggressively. Greg Lever puts a little left footed chip in, it bounced up nicely here. He just thought he was away there, but just a good bit of defence by Tonga in the end. Yeah, Lilo. Bunga Lilo. Plies his rugby in France, another of these French based Tongans. And Tonga with a man up this defending goal. It's going to be a hotel goal and a penalty goal for JP down the left side. Uh, they'll bring it all back. They think they scored, but they've been penalty awarded for offside. And the crowd shows their displeasure. There's only one man in charge. It's that fine balance there. Greg Little's been penalised. Let's see if we can see. He's behind there. He's behind there. He's going to wait till the hands are on. Hands are on. I think it's been called by the touch judge. 
I mean, these things, you've got to be on the line. Clearly, if you want to exert pressure on the kicker, you've got to be right on the offside line. And that's been interpreted that he was over it. I'm not sure it was. Look at that. Yeah, I think it was, actually. He's got to be the rear most foot. From that angle, it was the right call. Togger had to throw in. Lutui picks the big men out in the middle. They go for a long, thin maul. At the back with it is Latu. He's been in everything, hasn't he? He plays in Japan, played for New Zealand schools. Hogg. We haven't seen much of Hogg at all. Stuart Hogg does well, though. Just spins through a couple. Gives it out the back to Laidlaw, to Russell. Russell, Russell with his charge. There's a lot of mistakes being made here. This is the big centre. Pietau. And Tonga now with ball in hand. Sweeping around this blind side, the big Castro prop, Far Nunu. Tonga playing a very efficient, standard French game. One hit up, then try and get another hit up, then maybe a back attack. Another big man halfway through. And the defence looking a bit ragged here. Scotland's defence, this is Wid. This is Wid to Piotr. Piotr offloads inside, so they stand off for Sita. Tonga playing well here, Mafu. Takalua, Takalua to another big pot of forwards hitting right. Momentum is with Tonga at the moment. You can't say anything else. Momentum is with Tonga. Latu, Latu feeds on to the big fella again. Fanunu. Fanunu is brought to ground, but back it comes. Through Fosita, Fosita. Back inside to Alai Fanua. Two man on the left. Scottish defence getting around a bit ragged. Look for the short one. Spins out of tackle. Oh, Hogg has this. He could score. Defence, defence, defence. Force the mistake. And when you've got a player like Stuart Hogg who can run the length, there's always a chance. And that was good discipline defence up to that point. They were falling off, so half falling off tackles. I thought Tommy Seymour might get another interception for the first, third week running there. He missed it. Good tackle there. That was the tackle. They turned it over. Tommy Seymour went out there. He thought it was there, but a good Finn tackle Russell. by Finn Russell. And then once Stuart Hogg gets it, there was no way he was getting stopped. I have to tell you, I saw his father being turned away from the car park earlier on. And Stuart Hogg is one of the great players, isn't he, coming through. And this lad, this lad, if he keeps his feet on the ground, will be, he could be one of the world's great players. Well, you, you said it in the build-up. We hadn't really seen much of Stuart Hogg in the first 33 minutes. And then he was, he made a slight line break, and then he got the turnover there. He's got Scotland back in front. That's true, his, his line break. So, 12 apiece, Greg Laidlaw. Laidlaw just pulls that right foot back and caresses the ball to give Scotland the lead. It's not been all Scotland by any manner of means here. I'm looking to see if Dunbar is back on the pitch. I don't think he is. Scotland still a man down, so Scotland scored that. Well, there's one and down, John and Margaret Hall. But he was, he was turned away from the car park. He should have just played it clips and he played for Hoyt. That's because he was a referee. The, well, no, he was one of the great players for Hoyt before that. Hoyt, the green machine. Laidlaw. He's developed, hasn't he, Greg Laidlaw? He's said it himself that just that little move to England sharpened him. So it has very, much so, very much so. He's... Uh, he seemed to take one or two steps last year playing for Edinburgh and for Scotland as Alec Dunbar comes back on to the full complement but he's zipping the ball away from the base of the ruck and bringing real pace and tempo. And he's, been, he's been really, really good for Scotland so far. Man of the match against Argentina. He played pretty well last week as well. I'm just guessing though what Scotland have been trying to do is sling this ball and keep keep pace on the game, use their fitness. Setting it because we had it, we had it, hey, you move, we're reset, we're resetting. Okay, you've gone up, he's twitched, we're resetting. 
what came first? The ch yeah. <laughs> is this first a, the fence. The twitch or the early jump? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. That's probably the right call, JP Doyle. Just let's go again. Well, that was a mess. The Tui taken beautifully, it has to be said, by Locker Tui of Bézier. And this is what they do, they get across that first tackle. Through the hands of Fusita. Fusita out to Lilo, and then on the wing here, Vinacola. Vinacola strong enough. I like the way the Tongans play. Here's the French stuff just about to come up. Yeah, that was a uh, clear offside because the scrum half. Takalu just no, caught, no, no, got the pass caught in it, one of his uh, fellow players' legs, which meant then the ball went forward. And when the Tongan picked it up, it was uh, clearly in front. Scotland will get another chance to, for Finn Russell to get us down deep in the 22. Out of there bit quicker. I'm seeing your number. I'm now the Scots, I think, I think they'll want to just up the pace in this, but here's what the Tongans do, and this is the infringement. Yeah, Tong makes the tackle, Alex Dunbar is in there, Stuart, um, Ross Ford's in there, and you just see the back here. Takulua just hits off there and it goes forward and then fortunately then Latui was in an offside position. Scottish line out. Johnny Gray in the middle of a pod. Takes it easily. Back. Cowan. Cowan takes the hit up inside to Seymour. That's called as a forward pass. Yeah, looked at as well. Certainly from where up here. Behind, we're right behind it. It's a move that Glasgow do a lot. They get the blindside yeah. winger attacking around the fringes. It just upsets the drift of the defence is drifting out with the ball carrier. That little inside pass can go through a gap. Handling errors for each for Tongan and Scotland. And that's where Scotland will be most disappointed. I just think they've made a few basic mistakes that we've not seen in the first two games. And they've also just, they're not missing tackles, John, but they're just not making the big stop tackle that they've been doing in the first two games. Fine. That's the shot of Jeff Cross. Tight head. We've not seen too many scrums. That's the only chance to get to pre-engage. Keep your space. No. Don't pre-engage. Yep. These are these packs are heavy. 907 kilograms. The Scots, the Tongans, 902 kilograms. So just the five kgs extra in total. But the the Tongan pack, France. England, France, 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 predominantly playing in the top teams. Here we go. Mafu. Mafu short to Paya. Cowan's on that ball. And I guess Key, they'll smash up round the corner, try and smash up again. Scotland weren't quick enough at getting the ball off them. Five, not rolling. Yeah, we can see there's been a lot of penalties given away, John. That was, the, that was the only second scrum of the whole half, first yeah. half. Yeah. 38 minutes was the second scrum. A lot of the, the phases have ended up in penalties or turnovers. It's been quite disjointed. I mean, there's been, there's been a lot of effort both from both sides, but there's been a lot of mistakes. Yeah, you're, you're, your seven traps you there. You've got to sort that out. Yeah, it's such a fast pitch. You look at that, the penalty conceded. There's six penalties conceded from Scotland from just before the 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And that's where the yellow card occurred, and you can see why. Very good graphic. Tongan line out. There's the Tongan back division. And there's a good view of the bulk and size in the Tongan pack. Long throw. Taken well. Tui now. Tui now to Piotal. Accidental obstruction. It You're right, Andy. Lots of mistakes being made, aren't there? Nothing's too clean. It's an easy pitch to play, but nothing's. A lot of these rucks are ending up in infringements. Yeah. And there's a lot of it's down to the pressure. I mean, both sides are defending yeah, yeah, very yeah, aggressively. Yeah. The line speed is good. You Scotland here, Alex Dunbar, very solid there. Look, it's good. Blair Cowan's in support. Look at the secondary effort from Alex Dunbar, which forces a turnover. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of effort going in, a lot of good play. No one's getting a chance to sort of relax. It's not, no contact's easy. But that means your execution and your your accuracy has got to be very, very good. And as you say, just watching them bar there. Nowadays, if there's a ruck or a mall and you've made the tackle, they try and fly past the ball. Fine. Scotland scrum. Set. Harley providing some beef behind cross. Can he keep his footing? Ball comes back and it goes down. So almost every scrum nowadays 
three you could write an article, log a logic article about how scrums are means of winning yes, yeah, penalties. Yes, yeah, if you take it now, of Couldn't you? Well, people, yeah. people you need, well, I don't want to name the themes, teams, but you'll find teams now who are going forward will deliberately collapse a scrum to get the penalty. You could write an article. Yeah, you know, know, an article no, I would like to watch. <laughs> I think we've got to sort these scrums out. But I don't know about you, but I think the more they start collapsing these scrums, the time should be there where we can sit and bend props with just yellow card if you start collapsing two scrums. Something has to happen. Over 15. Long ball. Short one. Oh, and he just knocked it on. He was through the gap. That's an old line out move. You know what? That's an old all blacks line out move. And also, I think. But um, it was a try scored against the All Black for that move. Well, Scott, Scotland have used it before in the past, but you know what? That in many ways that just actually sums up Scotland's performance in the first half. You know, the execution just hasn't been quite there. There's been too many mistakes, and uh, unfortunately they've, they've not been able to get the.